What is the image of the Almighty? Was Adam and Eve made in his image? What does it mean to be made in the image of the Almighty? Many people think that Adam looked like Yah physically. Is that true? Or is it more than that? What calling does it mean to be made in the image of the Almighty? Was Adam and Eve the only ones made in his image? Yah has beyond genius intelligence and has always existed in his authority over everything. What does this image mean and why is it so important that Yah would mention it at the very beginning of the scriptures? What I submit to you today is that right now we do not have the image of Yah. We are not made in the image of the Almighty. But only three people have ever achieved this image. And I will try to show you how we can try to re regain this image of the Almighty so that we can return to the presence of our Father. In Genesis 1.26 it says, Then Yah said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, and let them rule over the fish in the sea, over the birds of the sky, and over the cattle of all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. The word image in Hebrew is the word selim, which means to shade, or shade, essence, or representative. So in ancient Hebrew, this word could mean the righteousness of Elohim was taught greatly. So what is righteousness or in essence he appointed Adam and Eve with? What is this elusive image? Does the image mean that Adam had the mental capacity similar to the Almighty? Or could it mean he was super creative like Yah? We have feelings like Yah, and we've been given authority like him to govern the animals in our families. I believe that all these are parts of the image, but not. But this is not the true image of Yah. What I see is that Adam and Eve not only lost the image of Yah, but they lost something else in the garden. And now we need to try to get this image back. In a kingdom, you have ki a king, and you have guards. A king has servants who deliver messages and has soldiers that protect him. So does the Almighty in his kingdom. These are called angels. Angels, or cherubs, or seraphim, are in Yah's kingdom, but they are guardian cherubs, or messenger cherubs, or warrior cherubs. So what is missing in Yah's current kingdom? There is no royal family mentioned in Yah's kingdom. We are his children and of this royal house. The king of England has servants but also has a royal family. And with the king of England there are citizens that live in his kingdom but are not part of his royal family. And there are people that are not in the kingdom. And all, and all that live outside of the kingdom. This I believe the same with Yah's kingdom. Some will live in the kingdom but not be part of his royal family. But they will still be in the kingdom. And some will not be in the kingdom at all. Some, I believe, there are three levels in Yah's kingdom. As we see in Matthew 5, those who teach and keep the commandments will be the greatest in the kingdom, and those who don't will be the least. Also, we see that some will be in the wedding party, and some will be guests, and then some won't be allowed to enter the wedding party at all, as we see in Matthew 22. So it seems to be that there's three different levels in the Almighty's kingdom which coincides with a regular kingdom as well. What is missing in Yah's current kingdom? He has servants, he has guards, he has soldier angels right now, but he has no royal family or no citizens that live in his kingdom right now. So because Yah wanted this, he created Adam and Eve in a special way that they would be part of his elite royal family. They had something special. And they were to be set apart and Kodesh and righteous. However, when Lucifer, being the highest ranking guardian angel 
in the kingdom saw that he was going to be under Adam and Eve. He got jealous and prideful and tempted Eve to sin so that he would be in a more powerful position. And within a short period of time, Satan fell, Adam and Eve fell, and they all lost their highly coveted positions. And Adam and Eve lost their image of Yah and were kicked out of Yah's royal family. However, they were still able to be citizens and live in Yah's kingdom. However, we who follow the commandments diligently and diligently are being called to be part of Yah's royal family right now and also to gain back that image that we do not have right now. In Yah's kingdom, we are not only in the kingdom, we are actually designed to be part of his royal family. We are not guards, we are not messengers, we are not planned to be, we were planned to be part of his royal family and he wants us to be sons and daughters in his kingship. So we will be royalty. However, this royal position is not given. It is earned by diligence and vigilance of keeping the commandments in Scripture, especially the seventh commandment, the seventh day Sabbath on Saturday. We are truly special and designed to be in Yah's royal family. That was the whole purpose in the beginning. We are not just in the kingdom, but we have been designed to be in Yah's image as well. These are two different things. To be the royal family is one thing, and to be in the image is another. And I will try to answer that question here shortly. Both can be attained as we do not have it right now. Most of us are not perfect yet, but we are called to be perfect. As it says in Matthew 5.48, Be ye the perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. So when someone says we cannot be perfect, and that we will always be sinners. Show them this verse and tell them maybe that if you want to be perfect, like Yah, we must do the tough things now to be filled up with the Holy Spirit and to prove ourselves worthy of the image of Yah and to gain this royal kingship back. We are the sons of Elohim and not designed to be angels or guardians or cherubs or messengers. We are designed for greatness. Being sons of Elohim, we are designed to be in Yah's image, and we are also supposed to be in his royal family as well, and have an amazingly special place in Yah's kingdom. This is a powerful calling, and we have been chosen to be in what is an amazing and wonderful honor. Since we understand what it is to be in the royal family, I will try to show you how we can attain this position back in Yah's immediate royal family, and I will also show you what we need to do to gain back the true image and how to gain both of these positions as this is what Yah's plan and His will is for us since the beginning. <coughs> the whole scriptures is a story of a broken family, a lost land, a lost kingship, a lost priesthood, and a lost home. In the Garden of Eden, we have five things that Yah wants. It is a simple picture of a family, a marriage, a righteous king, and a priestly people, and a set-apart temple, temple slash home, and a land flowing with milk and honey, with abundance of food and water. The home is the Garden of Eden, the land is Jerusalem, and a family, Yah, Adam, and Eve, and the marriage covenant that was broken, and a picture of a royal priesthood, and an image that was lost. I will try to show you how we can regain this lost image of Yah that we desperately need to, and to achieve eternal life. How can we be made in the image of Yah? When Yah is spirit, as it says in John 4.24, Yah is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. This is a big 
clue right here. He may have a human-like form and could be make, make himself flesh if he wanted to. However, he is not made of flesh. So we may look at like him, but I don't believe that this is the true image of Yah. Because, the only, because only three in Scripture have been called to be in the image of Yah. Yahushua, the Messiah, is in the perfect image of the Almighty, as we see in 2 Corinthians 4, 4. In this case, Elohim of this world has blinded the minds of unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel, the glory of Mashiach, who is in the image of Yah. I believe that Yeshua, the Messiah, came back to restore the true image of Yah for all of us to return to the image that Adam and Eve lost. We have lost the image. Thank Yah that he sent his son to help us restore this vital image. And I believe this to be the key to eternal life. So far we have only three, I believe, that were in the image of Yah. Let us look at the similarities of these three to help us figure out what the image of Yah really is. The image has to be something that Yah, Yeshua, Adam and Eve all have or had have. What was it that we know for sure that they all had? In the garden we see Adam and Eve were keeping the commandments that they were given, but not eating of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But something happened. Eve was tempted and they both failed the test. And then their eyes were opened and they knew that they were naked. And why didn't Yah clothe them with skins? Were they cold? No, they were ashamed. I believe this is another key. It is a shame they felt. So they lost something that made them feel ashamed. They were ashamed because they lost something so precious, so holy, so Kodesh. And we all lost our chance to receive the image because of the fall in the garden. So right now we are not in the image of the of Yah. I believe that no other human is in the image of Yah. I, <coughs> I see that Adam and Eve being ashamed was a big clue to understanding what this image is. I looked up the opposite word for ashamed and it is said peaceful, bold, joyful, glad, confident. And then it came to me that these adjectives describe the fruits of the Spirit. And shame is a fruit of the being fleshly. And if Yah is spirit, it all started to come together. What did Yeshua do and Adam and Eve do as well? We all know that Yah cannot sin. Yeshua did not sin. And Adam and Eve didn't sin before the fall in the garden with the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So it came to me, they all walked in the fruits of the Spirit, and they all kept the commandments. This is part of the image of Yah that I was looking for. However, this is not the true essence of the image. It is only part of the image. So let's look at Scripture to find the answer of what this image of Yah really is. So do you want to know what I believe the image of Yah is based on Scripture? My theory, and what I propose to you, that is... Yah is light, and I believe Adam and Eve were light beings in the same image of Yah as well. And this is what they knew. They, this is how they knew they were naked, because they had lost their glorified bodies of light. I believe they could have lived forever if they did not eat of the tree. But they lost this light and were now subject to death. Let me explain this theory that Yah is light in Scripture. As we see in 1 John 1, 5, this is the message we have heard from Him and declare to you. Yah is light. In Him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to fellowship with Him and yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of the Messiah, His Son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, 
we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from, un from all unrighteousness. In this verse, we can see that it clearly states that Yah is light. Second Samuel twenty-two twenty-nine, you are a lamp, O Yah, and that Yah illuminates my darkness. Here again, Yah being called a light. First Peter two nine, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into the wonderful light. Do you see in this verse how we are all called out of darkness into his light? And we do these, we become royal priesthood. And we then will be called into his wonderful light. Song of Solomon 6.10 Who is this who shines like the dawn, as fair as the moon? as bright as the sun, as majestic as the stars of procession. Solomon, the wisest man ever, is telling us that Yah is brighter than the sun. Revelation 21, 23, the new Jerusalem. But I saw a new temple in the city because Yahuwah Elohim and the Lamb are its temple. And the city has no need for sun or moon to shine on it, because the glory of Yah illuminates the city, and the Lamb is its lamp. Its light the nations will walk, and into the kings of the earth will bring their glory. Here we are told that Yah is light, and He is so bright and a being of light that His light is brighter than the sun. John twelve thirty five. Then Yeshua told them, You are going to have the light just a little longer. Walk while you have the light before darkness overtakes you. Whoever walks in the darkness does not know what they are going, where they are going. Believe in the light while you have the light so that you may become children of light. So you see here both Yeshua and Yahuwah are called lights in this last two verses. So my conclusion according to the scripture is that Yah is light and light equals love, according to the scripture. So the image of Yah is light, which is love. And this is the image of Adam and Eve were made of. And this image of light shines down on us. But are we absorbing this light that Yah pours on us? Are we reflecting Yah's image back on everyone we see? I will try to show you how we can get back into the image of Yah briefly. The image of Yah is an image of a royal priesthood of righteousness. Yah, the supreme priest, a royal leader of the entire universe, and I believe Adam was the first priest. And Yeshua also being a king over king and our high priest, so I believe when we gain back this image of Yah, we will be priestly and will be part of this amazing royal family. Do you know that when light travels in space, it, tra it travels trillions of miles and it becomes infinite, which means it is limitless or endless. Light lasts forever. It never stops being light. Look what the science website says about light. It says an object approaches the speed of light, its mass rises very quickly. When an object travels 186,000 miles per second, its mass becomes infinite, and so does the energy required to move it. Also, ever since Albert Einstein formulated the theory of relativity, relativity nearly a century ago, it has been said, it has been a central tenet of physics that nothing can travel faster than light. So we see through science that light travels faster than anything, and it is endless and eternal and never ends. This could explain how Yah can be the beginning of time and also be at the end of time at the same time. And this could also explain how He is eternal and has always existed because He has always been light. This is an amazing theory of explaining how Yah can be eternal and can travel so quickly over time. 
Also, I found in physics website that light will continue to go on forever as it does not go away or falter, as we see in this quote from a physics website. The photon or the beam of photons of light can be can go on infinite distance, traveling all the while at the speed of light, 186,000 miles per second. So light travels faster than anything, and light never ends. Here are some more verses about light and love being of equal value. When Moses went up to Mount Sinai, how was it that he did not eat or drink, but was sustained by some sort of supernatural energy? And when he came down the mountain, he, his face shone like light. I believe that he was sustained by the light of Yah, and this same light sustains Yah and anyone who has access to this light. Moses absorbed the light of Yah and was sustained by the very love and light of Yah. The theory I have is I believe when we get our glorified bodies that it might be made of light based on scripture. And this light lasts forever. We will last forever. And since light equals love, we will all be in Yah's perfect love where there is no sin and no darkness. Yeshua ha has eternal life, and he will live forever, and he is all love, and we see that he is seen as a being of light in Matthew 17, too. Matthew, there he has transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. It also says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments in John 14, 15. So this ties in love with keeping the commandments, which Adam and Eve Yah and Yeshua all did and did do and still do. But just keeping the commandments is a result of having light and love and is not the image of Yah. Remember, the Pharisees kept the commandments but did not have the love behind it to make it valuable. It was not valid and Yeshua called most of them hypocrites. So this chapter below sums up the whole matter. It states that if we are not bearing fruit of the Spirit and keeping the commandments out of love, then we will be cut off like the Pharisees. The vine and the branches. John 15. I am the true vine and my father is the gardener he cuts off the branch in my in me that bears no fruit while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful you already clean because of the word i have spoken to you remain in me as i also remain in you no branch can bear fruit by itself it must remain in the vine Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourself to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands, and remain in his love. I have told you this so that you may... You, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down their lives for one's friend. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask in, my in the name of my Father, 
in my name, the Father will give you. <laughs> this is my command, love each other. We have lost the image. Thank Yah, he sent his son to help us restore this vital image. And I believe we, c we can do this if we abide in the Messiah, which is the vine that is attached to Yah. And Yah's light will shine through you and into you, and then you can radiate it out to others and reflect it back to Yah and bear much fruit. So how do we abide in the vine? Well, Yahusha is the way to the Father. I believe that nobody can receive the image but only through the, His Son. As we see in this verse, John 14, 6, Yeshua answered, I am, the vine, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So Yahushua is the key for us to gain back this beautiful image of Yah, which is truly unconditional love, which is an everlasting light. So how do we gain the image of Yah and stay and stay his shadow of light and stay in the vine to stay in the image of Yah I recommend these 10 steps as I believe when we take these 10 steps it brings us higher and closer to the, the light of Yah and more in the image of Yah this is our true design I call them the 10 lighthouses what why do I call them the 10 lighthouses what does a lighthouse do Let's look at the definition of a lighthouse. In the dictionary, it says a lighthouse is a tower with a bright light at the top, located at an important and dangerous place regarding navigation. The two main purposes of a lighthouse are to serve as a navigational aid to warn other people of dangerous areas, is like a protective warning sign on the sea. So you see, a lighthouse is a beacon of light that warns others on how to navigate in dangerous environment in order to stay alive. Well, I believe that we are lighthouses of Yah, and we need to warn others of coming tribulation and to guide others to safety right now on earth. It is like we are on a big ship, and the ship has hit a rock and is sinking, and we are the ones who are have extra lifeboats to help others get to safety. We have been given great wisdom and knowledge and understanding of the scriptures, and now it, it is our turn to share and reflect this wisdom of light and love onto others to help save many people's eternal life. We are to act like lighthouses of Yah here on earth. The first five lighthouses steps are steps to fill us with the light and love of Yah, which is His image. And this is abiding in the vine, as we can do nothing by ourselves unless we abide. And the last five lighthouses steps are how to reflect the light and love we have been given to others, which is the perfect image of Yah. We have been given a talent, and we should use these talents to advance Yah's kingdom on earth. We have been given great gifts along with this gift. We have been given greater responsibility to pass this information on to others. The first lighthouse step is to be in constant prayer all day, even when you are busy at work. Take breaks so that you can pray. How can we reflect Yah's love and light if we are not praying? This is abiding in the vine. All the patriarchs in Scripture prayed frequently and constantly. The Messiah prayed by himself for hours at a time. He prayed and prayed diligently and diligently. And so to walk, to fill yourself with the Holy Spirit so you're walking in the Spirit, you have to pray. It is essential, crucial. It's like eating or drinking water. The second lighthouse is to pray and fast as we are commanded to, unless you have health issues. Fasting is an excellent way to stay full of the light of Yah and feel His love and rely on Him as your sustainer instead of food. It is trusting and believing in Yah's supernatural love and light and power. When we fast as Moses did at Mount Sinai, Yah's, Yah's will sustained us and has sustained Moses. Yah did this with his light and pure love. Moses was engulfed in pure love and light which sustained him for 40 days. That is how Moses glowed brightly even after he left the presence of Yah as we see in Exodus 34, 29. 
Now it was so when Moses came down from Mount Sinai, and the two tablets of the testimony were in Moses' hand, when he came down from the mountain, then Moses did not know that his skin of his face was shone brightly while he talked with them. So when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face radiated light, and they were afraid to come near him. This light and pure love is the image of the Father, and we can also receive this light as we fast and rely on Yah to sustain us with his light and pure love. It is this love that lasts forever. I believe it is the light which is pure unfiltered love is the image that Adam and Eve had in the garden. And the light lasts forever. So we will not have to eat to sustain ourselves because love is the most superior fruit of the Spirit. And this is the only fruit of the Spirit that can sustain us forever. Without love there is no light and there is no life and there is no image of Yah but only the image of flesh, which is man. We do not want to be in the image of Caesar. We want to be in the image of Yah. Third, the third lighthouse is by reading the word or listening to the word on your smartphones at least 20 minutes or more every day. This will fill you with Yah's love and light and image. The fourth lighthouse is meditating and keeping all the commandments. This helps us abide in the vine, which is Yahushua's, the Messiah, is attached to. So Yah's image is passed through the Messiah and given to us when we do these lighthouse steps. Yeshua, the Messiah, is the way back to the image of the Father. And keeping all the commandments is crucial. There are over 1,200 commandments in the scriptures not just 10, and all of them apply, the ones that apply to us today. If you're not a judge, don't worry about having someone stoned. The United States court system can handle that. If you're not a farmer, then don't worry about the seventh year land rest. If you're not a governor or a priest, then don't worry about the priestly and governly duties. But all other scriptures and laws that apply to you, we should do. The fifth lighthouse is to worship him in song. This fills us with great love and light and reflects his image right back onto him. If you sing a heartfelt song to your spouse, would they not just love you even more? Of course they would. Yah's love is such more, so much more than when we sing love songs to him. I remember, I recommend that when you sing to Yah, focus on his holy throne like you're right there in his presence, and this will bring great joy to Yah and help increase your true image. The sixth lighthouse is we need to stay in constant fellowship with our brothers and sisters in the body and try to give praise and stay goal-oriented. We should have a plan on how we can advance Yah's kingdom. Acts 2.46, as it says in Scripture, they met daily with sincere hearts, praying to Yah and praising Yah. The seventh lighthouse is that we should make disciples. We should all have at least one person that we disciple to help teach and encourage the, tr the true ways of Yah. The eighth lighthouse is to do ministry of any kind like once a week, to help others, whether it be to help the widows, the orphans, the poor, the prisoners, the sick, anything that helps the weak in our society. Yeshua's wise brother James says that this is true religion, as he spoke in James 127. Pure religion and to, and to be undefiled before Messiah and the Father is this, to visit the father that's the widows in their affliction and keep himself unspotted from the world one of the easiest ministries you can do is to encourage others and lift up others a great way to brighten someone's day it is the gift of encouragement everybody should compliment each other so one every day this doesn't cost you a penny and could really inspire and lift up someone's mood it only takes 30 seconds of your day to say something nice and and that could impact them, it could be incredible. And this reflects the image of Yah and builds more light in you. Every day we should be speaking life and love and compliments to people. 
to inspire and to uplift. This is one of the gifts of the Spirit that we all have and should be used every day. They did a study with plants, and when plants said, when they, the people said negative comments to the plants, these plants died and were weak and feeble. However, when the students said positive statements to the plant, the other plants, they thrived and flourished. The ninth lighthouse is to evangelize the word to others. We should spread the gospel, the good news, to at least one person every day. And the last lighthouse is to bear fruits of the Spirit. Bearing fruits means that you are abiding in the vine, as we see in John 15, 15. By bearing fruits of the Spirit and by doing good works, you are constantly doing these ten lighthouse steps. You will have no time for sin, and you are having the Messiah abide in you. And when you have the perfect image of Yah in you, then you are acting like Yah. And this is our true goal in life, to be in the, just like the character of Yah and his perfect image of love and light. Here are the fruits of the Spirit that we need to be focusing on every day. And remember, it says in Scripture, Be perfect as I am perfect. So we can be perfect, not by our own strength, but only by the Father and the Messiah abiding in us but we must stay full of the Holy Spirit in order to be perfect. Remember that the Almighty hates the sinner and hates the sin. The the church says differently, but the scriptures say that he loved Jacob and hated Esau. It says in scripture that he abhors the sinners. And uh, so we have to remember that he doesn't like sin or sinners and he wants us to be perfect and we can be perfect if we follow these steps but here are the ones here are the fruits of the spirit that we need to be focusing on every day first corinthians 13 love is patient love is kind it does not envy it does not boast it is not proud it does not dishonor others it is not self-seeking It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. Galatians, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to the Messiah have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live in the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. I believe that these verses are the single most important verses in all the scriptures regarding the true image of Yah. As once we have mastered these fruits of the Spirit, then we have learned our lesson and become in the image of Yah. The highest wisdom, the most brilliant man, and the highest achievement a person can get in this life is to have the love like Yah. This is true genius. And no one thing could be greater in life than achieving this goal, as it leads to true happiness and eternal life with Yah in paradise. Do not let anyone steal your crown that you have been chosen for, which is the true image of Yah. Adam and Eve bared fruit and were fully light and fully loved, just like our Messiah and just like Yah. The reason why... The churches of today have been misled about keeping all the commandments as they have misinterpreted what Apostle Paul was trying to say. All throughout scripture, which is that in order to be in the true image of Yah, we need to keep the commandments. But if we only keep the commandments for our own salvation and only keep the commandments in in word and not over our hearts and soul with no love or light behind it, then we have made the commandments of no use. What Paul is trying to say to us is we need to keep the law 
with love, unlike the Pharisees who kept the commandments but had no love in them. So a perfect reflection of the image of Yah is to keep the commandments with complete love in our hearts. As this is the true image of Yah, and this is the everlasting light we can attain. What is the difference between a legalist slash Pharisee who keeps the law and a true believer who keeps the law? I will give you an example using speeding on the freeway. A legalist follows the law of not speeding, so they do not get a ticket for speeding. This is a self-seeking, selfish way to follow the law. A true believer follows the law of not speeding, so they do not hurt anybody by driving too recklessly. So one is doing it for selfish reasons, the other person is doing it for unselfish reasons. Basically, the Father wants us to turn from selfishness to selflessness. This is the image in bearing much fruit of love, joy, peace, happiness, goodness, self-control, faithfulness, gentleness. So a true believer follows the law, but follows it with love for others, not for self-seeking reasons. And this is what Yah wants us to learn. And this is what all the New Testament is trying to instill in us. So when we follow all the law, it is a lamp, which is good. But when we follow all the law with love behind it, then it is like the sun, a huge, gigantic, everlasting light. And this is what Yah is looking for. This is the light of Yah and the true image of Yah. And this is what I believe Yahusha is talking about in Matthew 5 regarding the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. In other words, unless we follow the law with love, then we shall no, by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Without love, we are just clanging bells, as we see in 1 Corinthians 13.13. 13. Love should be the greatest goal in our life. Now we see but a dim reflection as a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part that I shall know fully, even if I am fully known, and know these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Let love be your highest goal. You see here that love should be our highest goal in life, and keeping the commandment which is showing love and doing all the other ten lighthouse steps with love behind them. This will help us gain back the image of Yah. And how do you love the Father? John fourteen fifteen. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. So the commandments are still in place today. All of the commandments. The Old Testament, the New Testament, all of it. Unless it doesn't apply to you, then don't do it. But if most, the majority of the commandments do apply and should be kept. I believe that following the commandments brings a lamp in our world. And when you add love with the following of the commandments, then you have a very bright light, most brilliant light in the universe. And this all comes from Yah, who is light and love. And once we would do these lighthouse steps, it will be it will help us to become in the true and complete image of Yah. If we do not become light, which equals love, then we cannot live forever, because light never ends and continues forever and is everlasting. All matter and flesh are always in a decaying state. So if we stay fleshly and keep the commandments, but we don't keep them with love, then we have not become the everlasting light that Yah wants us to become. So this is this love is very important, and we cannot do it by ourselves. So we need to pray for the love of the Father to always fill us so we can bear love and light to this world, and pray to have the Messiah abide in us. When we pray and combine it with love and compassion and emotion, and visualize the end result, then that prayer has far more power than a prayer just spoken with words. A little love? When Yeshua healed people, he had genuine compassion 
for the people. And this is how he got results. He did not just say the words. He put great love and compassion into the prayer. And this is how they were healed. Yeshua had the light, which is love. Regarding the Pharisees' trick question whether we should pay taxes to Caesar or not, Yeshua's response was one of the most brilliant responses in the scripture. And in this process of answering the Pharisees, he made them look like idol worshipers for holding graven images in their hands. They had a Roman coin in their possession with a graven image of Caesar. He totally made the Pharisees look bad and made them their evil plan backfire right in their face. And they walked away embarrassed for having a graven image in their possession and losing a battle of wits. And the Pharisees were amazed at Yeshua's great wisdom. And the best part about this confrontation is that when we learn that Yah's image is on us and we are all made in the image of Yah, or we have the ability to gain this image of Yah, we must give unto Yah, which is His. We must give ourselves to Yah. Our whole purpose in life is to give glory to Yah by dedicating our lives to worshiping and serving and submitting to Yah and doing all the commandments and giving Him all glory for our talents, skills, and abilities and seeking and asking for His will to be done in our life, not ours. He has great, incredible, amazing plans for our life. And we have our own plans. And if we follow our own plans, then they might lead down the wrong path. So always ask for His will to be done. Because if we do our own will, we could possibly be left out of the kingdom, as it says in Matthew 7, 21. So then, bear the fruit. You will rec By their fruit, you will recognize them. Not everyone who says to me, Elohim, Elohim, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only He who does the will of my Father in heaven. So we are all made of flesh. But once we learn Yah's love by following the steps, we can gain back this image of Yah, this light and this love, which is the true image of Yah. And when we give up our will in life and do Yah's will, then we will be filled with more light and true love. And the more light we have, then the more light we can shine onto others. I believe that we are called to be amazing representatives of Yah to the rest of the world. We have a far higher calling than others of the world right now. We are called into relationship and covenant to be priests in this cosmic temple. We are called and anointed to be servants of a royal priesthood, a royal kingdom, to be part of his royal family. Not just to be living outside of his castle, or temple, his mansion, but inside the mansion, inside the temple, to be priests and kings of his royal family, serving him in the same house, not outside living uh, in the kingdom, but right inside the castle. We are, we are going to be royalty if we do this right. Some, some people will be outside the kingdom where there's weeping and gnashing. Some people will be in the kingdom but live in the land. Some will be farther away from the Father. Some will be closer to the Father. But we want to gain inside the house to be part of his royal family. So we, need to, we, mu we must do the tough things now to become champions so that we can be in his kingdom and serve him. This is his will and his plan for us. So we must try diligently and vigilantly try to attain this. Our whole goal in life is to get back to the, this royal priesthood and temple and to restore the true image of Yah that was lost almost 6,000 years ago. We are beautifully and wonderfully made by Yah, but we are just missing the crucial image of Yah. So that way we can become the beautiful and perfected masterpiece Yah intended. We need to do the tough things it takes right now while we have time to try to become the perfect image of Yah as best we can. So if following the commandments in Scripture equals life and being loving equals life, by conclusion that following the commandments with love equals the image of the Father, which is an everlasting light. 
and light from Yah, which is His essence, is infinite and never-ending and shines forever. It is pure, true, unconditional love and its greatest. This is the image of Yah. You cannot sin and He is love. Yah cannot sin and He is love. So by not sinning and loving is the true and perfect image of Yah. When we achieve this goal, we will be able to receive our glorified bodies of light and we will be able to live forever because light never stops and is infinite. And so I pray that we can all attain these goals of not sinning and loving Yah and everyone so we can be put back into the image that we were truly designed to be and to live with Yah forever in paradise as a royal family, just like Yah planned in the beginning.